Hello, people. We're live, and we're <laughs> going to be doing a regular. Today, James is here. James has taken over the Mob Channel, mm -hmm. and uh, he's helped me here, so I wanted him to be here for the first uh, really official live show. And we're yeah, going to talk I'm about... Yeah, I'm sorry, James. No, I said uh, thank you for, for letting me be here. Um, you know that our first show was actually on this channel. It was kind of we did this before, um, you know, you had me on the mob channel. So um, I'm really excited about how well the, the channel's grown the last month. So a lot of people here, which is cool. Yeah, so we did. Yeah. Okay, so let me say hi to some people that's in here. Danny Stories, how you doing? If anybody's having any trouble hearing me or anything, this is a new mic I'm using and new headsets, please let me know. Okay, so we got Renee. Renee, how you doing? Like always, uh, if anybody thinks they deserve a wrench and want to be a wrench part of this show, let me know, and I'll check you out. Uh, I'm going to – okay, let's see. Brett, how you doing? I, I appreciate And Brian Pelliquin, how you doing? Lookman Thomas, how you doing, Lookman Thomas? Marine, it's good. Marine's such a good person, always here, very, very loyal. Yes. Joe Root, how you doing? Mickey Griggs, good to see you here, Mickey. I'm glad you came. Okay, Jason Sager, thank you, Jason. And, uh, Sorry about that. It's me. That was you, right? Okay. I'm saying, <laughs> what the hell's wrong with my mic? We're going to have an interesting conversation. I'm going to talk about a couple scumbags that I was very loyal to. And uh, we tried to help, you know, uh, I thought they were really decent people. And they did a real scumbag thing. And I'm going to talk about it. I'm not going to mention their names. I'm going to give you the initials of one of them. We're going to call one MM. And we're going to call the other one the, glove, the, the gloved wonder. Okay. Uh, if you guys can figure out who they are, do me a favor. Do not put their show in the chat. I do not want to give them any play from this show. That's what they want. Uh, we're not going to give them any play. And then we're going to discuss what they did. Really scumbag thing they did last night. Uh, well, two nights ago. Uh, they had this dude on that was nicknamed Mrs. Phillips. Mm. And has been running around since the 1990s telling everybody how great the WWE is. And he was a ring, ring boy that they didn't bother. But, you know, since then, we have three more ring boys that have come out. And we also have major shows being developed with ring boys you've never met before. And so this guy, this guy who was supposed to be my friend, real low, he did the, he got mad because I wouldn't come on and debate that ring boy guy because I knew that they, he called, they called him Mrs. Phillips mm. and he's a WWE prop is what he is. Yeah. He's been out defending the WWE for the longest time now. Uh, so uh, we're going to um, talk about that. Argo triggers people. How you doing, Argo? Sam the man, David James. Good to see you guys here. Okay, we're up to 60. Hey, listen, you know this show that was talking shit? I got more people here than you've developed in five. Uh, you've been on, what, 10 years? One of your shows got taken out and you came back? You guys can't even get eight people in your live shows. <laughs> and then I come out to help you. Uh, we're in the middle of developing something for TV. And you prefer to have Mrs. Philip, Phillips come on? That's what we're going to call him, Mrs. Phillips. So you, have, you prefer to have Mrs. Phillips come on? And you prefer <laughs> Mrs. Phillips over this show that's growing real fast? You're not too bright. And the guy from Florida, the glove boy, give me a call if you ever want to come to a show that's going to actually accomplish something and do well. Because where you are now, your feet stuck in mud and you would have got it will betray anybody. Okay. And I'm sure you guys are watching. You really, uh, Especially you, M.M., you scumbag. Yeah. Okay, I mean Jason Sigger. I'm sorry, was that James? No, I said, you know, the thing is, it just, uh, nothing really surprises me, but, you know, it's just, it's just sad that, uh, you know, that basically it's a plant, you know, this, this guy brought on a plant from the WWE and, and I can't believe he was so dumb not to realize that, you know? Well, here's what he said. Here's what he said. He said, 
I didn't mind him even having him on. I didn't even mind the show. But then he said this. He said, oh, and I hope to God that Tom Cole wasn't lying and set up an innocent man. Mel oh, my God. This is a guy with his show. Mel Phillips in 1988 got fired, got released by Vince McMahon because of having trouble with the boys. Mm -hmm. And then Vince McMahon brings him back a couple months later. Yeah. We have... We have a slew of ring boys. We got new ring boys out now. People are coming forward. We got we got uh, documentaries coming out uh, all over the place that are going to be discussing this stuff. Yeah, exactly. And, and there's no way anyone that was even Vince, Vince knows it wasn't. You know that there wasn't any lies about that. You know, Terry Garvin, Vince admitted it. Mel v Phillips. Yeah, Vince, yeah, Vince admitted it. Yeah. And then he said that he hopes my brother didn't do this for money. My brother actually <laughs> went back to work for his back salary. He could yep. have gotten millions of dollars. He could have. But he chose to, he wanted his job back. He wanted to be part of that wrestling world. And this scumbag MM has the nerve to say that. You know, I was on his show a week after my brother died. Mm. And I was very emotional on that show and stuff. And when he did this, I was shocked. I thought he was a decent guy. Yeah. But he preferred Mrs. Phillips. And that's who you are, Mrs. Phillips. That's who you are. You're the guy that's been running around. You were the ugly one that nobody wanted to touch. <laughs> you were the ugly ring boy because you said you never got touched. Yes, <laughs> they only they only touched the good-looking ones. They left the ugly ones alone. And you're lucky. You're ugly. Yeah. Okay. So creative, how you doing? Good to see you. And so I think that you know who I'm talking about. I'm not too happy with them at all. But we'll just leave it at that. Okay, Mickey, uh, let's play. Let's put up some of these remarks. People, we're just doing a live today to say hi, to tell us, tell you what we got planned. This show has picked up 4,000 subs this month, people. 4,000. That's amazing. Uh, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't even know what to say. Um, it's incredible, the growth of this show. And um, I, I really don't know what to say except thank you. Well, and it, you know, and what I think, Lee, the best part of this is that, um, that we've got a new generation of people that are now aware of what happened. You know, Vince never went away. He had been, you know, he continued to do what he did. He, it, you know, Vince has always been good about, you know, having his attorneys and people to just slide stuff under. And so years passed and he thought he got away with it. And so now, you know, people are realizing what happened there. It's a new generation of people that, that had no clue. And so I think that's, that's a testament and your brother deserves this, you know, to be able to have this attention to it. Okay. And, yeah. So, and you're, and you're right. And, uh, uh, yeah, Hey guys, keep very peaceful in here. Don't talk about other people. Let's just have a good time. We're not here to, you know, let me do the bashing. Okay. That's my <laughs> job. Uh, but if you're any fighting in there enough, there's no sense for it. I don't care what your situation is over. Uh, there's two people I have to ask you not to disrespect in here. That's my friend, James and my other friend, Angel Gotti. If you disrespect them, uh, I will, you know, they're my friends. Okay. Uh, Miss can't be wrong. Uh, I gave you a wrench because you're one of the best in the business. Uh, any issues that we had in the mob genre, this is not the mob genre. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is something totally different we're, we're trying to create here. Giovanni Giorgio, it's good to see you, Giovanni. I haven't seen you in a while. Scott Burke, how you doing? Oh, now, now this is nice. Uh, $20 from, uh, DVE eight, three, five, six. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's nice when you get that monetization working. Yeah. And people, I'm going to tell you what, um, and my first month on here, we, we did, uh, we, we financially, it was a good month. And as James knows, it's very hard to make money on here unless you're putting out good stuff. All right. You know, and and we're trying to put out good stuff. Yeah. Okay. And I want to talk to you. Uh, okay. So people talk about Janelle Grant. I, I just want to. People say, okay, so maybe Janelle Grant 
uh, and knew this was going on and she accepted it. But people, I understand that you're saying that some of you, but I want to ask you this question. If any of you's read those texts by, by Vince McMahon, say Janelle Grant was writing dirty texts to him. Do you think a 78 year old man should be writing filthy, dirty texts like that? Would you guys as human beings, as men, would you write dirty texts like that? Would you write dirty texts like that to other to, to, uh, women? You know, it's one thing saying, oh, baby, what are you doing? What are you wearing? But when you say to someone through a text, I like to see three uh, black dudes bang you and describe each orifice on that body. That is twisted and demented and kind of racist. Yeah. And, you know, one of the points on that is that, you know, uh, as a celebrity, you know, obviously he's a celebrity. He, you know, he should know better than that to, you know, you don't write anything like that into text or any sort of message that's, that could be put in the public. He, you know, I don't know if it's, he's just got dementia or what the deal is with Vince, but maybe he doesn't care. Maybe he just realizes that he thinks he's invincible. I don't know. It's just really bizarre to me that he would be that stupid. Argo, thank you for the donation. And if anybody else wants to donate, you more than feel. Uh, thank you very much down there it's really appreciated and yep. everything that you put into this show will go for the first couple months we'll go back into this show because believe me this is not cheap to do to develop this show uh, because we're trying to do it really good and there's a membership if you want to join the membership it's 4.99 a month and in the membership i'm going to do two lives a week so if, uh, once we get to a certain number oh my god Ladies and gentlemen, oh, very, wow. very famous woman is here. Angel <laughs> Gotti, the daughter of John Gotti, has decided to come and say hi. Angel, how are you doing? Thank you so much for your support. Yeah, thank Angel you. Is the, Angel is the sweetest woman in the world, and anybody that attacks her is a dirtbag scumbag. Yeah. Uh, and that's all. I okay, so... Um, so let's get back to Vince McMahon. So Vince McMahon re wrote these real dirty texts. I mean, and they would, uh, and then some, we know lots of things that he did, but here's the thing that he did that was the worst people. He left in 2023 in, in March, I think, no, actually it was a, like, I believe in uh, the spring of 2023 because he was under investigation for uh, basically paying people, paying women off. And so he decided to leave. And so the board was going to do an investigation on him. And yeah. so the guy, the guy that did the investigation really didn't do an investigation. His name was Speed. That was his last name. And so he does an investigation. And so Vince comes back a few months later. And what does he do when he comes back? He screws over the shareholders by taking the company that will let him sit on the board. So what Vince McMahon did is he screwed over all these uh, stockholders, the shareholders, the people that run the company, the shareholders, he did not tell them about bids he was getting. He purposely came back just to get as much money as he can and to be able to sit on the board. Yeah, and that's where he may get he may get in trouble from that. Yes. You know, SEC violations. It you know a lot of things that you you could kind of get away with. You know, even the you know the whole thing with the text and all that's civil matters. But the thing with the SEC, if it's fraud, you'd be construed as fraud. It's information that was known that wasn't revealed. Um, also, you know, there's bylaws that you have to go by, and so you know that's where he could get in trouble. It could either be civil or criminal for for Vince, but he's in deep trouble over this. Oh, yes. He's going to have a lot of problems. The SEC, the, the SEC is the worst problem that he's going to have because you're mm -hmm. talking about taxes. You're talking about money. You're talking about illegal uh, uh, screwing over. He's being sued, too, by Khan. The guy that probably will. Khan will probably do. Uh, he'll probably take the company over and, and do the role of Vince McMahon. And he despises Vince McMahon. Yeah, Khan's not going to, he, he, you know, as powerful as Vince McMahon is, Khan is even more powerful, and, you know, I, I wouldn't want to be in Vince's shoes right now. Yeah, 
and he has he has a lot of things to worry about. Uh, people say that he has uh, dementia. It might be the best thing for him because um, if he doesn't, he's going to be 80 years old and sitting in a cell somewhere. Okay, uh, yes, and uh, Sam the Man. Hello, and how you doing? And let's get back to the two scumbags friends of mine. Uh, okay, so this show, the, the guy literally uh, said that if my brother was lying about Mel Phillips, that he was an innocent man. Uh, that means that he was innocent. How stupid are you, Eminem? How stupid are you for make such a stupid statement? Is this because when we when I was on your show and I tore you apart in that debate, you know, I came on your show, you actually had more people in your live show than you've ever had. And that's how you paid this show back for Mrs. Phillips. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just it's just unbelievable. I mean, there's no I don't understand the lack of uh, I mean, it. it <laughs> I, I, there's no words for it. And the reason I'm saying that is that people that were in there 30, 40 years ago, they knew about Mel Phillips. It was joked about just the same thing with, um, Terry Garvin, the same thing you know, with Pat Patterson. I mean, none of that was, everyone knew about it. I mean, I can't understand how this Miss Phillips could even come up with something so stupid. Yeah. Uh, well, well, people if people give him a platform, you know, he wrote me a letter about a month ago and asked to come on the show so he can defend Mel Phillips. Hmm. And you know what he claims? Wait till you hear this. Do you know how old he was when he met Ms. Mel Phillips? How old? Ten. Hmm. I'm like, dude, you met him when you were ten. You were a kid and he was a grown man. Do you get that? Yeah, and then exactly. This, this clown also admitted that... Uh, he also admitted that um, Mel used to film people. He admitted it. Hmm. But then he goes, my parents loved him, though. If your parents let a 30-something-year-old man come in the house and you're 10, what is wrong with that? Exactly. What is wrong with them, Mrs. Phillips? But see, you're always going to have these people. Okay, who else is defending uh, the WWF right now? Um, uh, John Cena did a half-assed job uh, of uh, speaking against it. Uh, you know, uh, who else? The Rock. Mm -hmm. um, the, these big guys, they made a lot of money with Vince McMahon. You know, I can understand that part. But the fact of the matter is, Vince McMahon, it's no maybes if Vince McMahon did these sexual things. There's no maybes about it. The only maybe is how involved was Janelle Grant. Yeah. But the fact is you've got a head of a corporation that is writing dirty, nasty, filthy stuff to a woman like that. You, you show me a CEO that does that, please. <laughs> CEOs get in affairs, they get caught doing things, sure. they say they say dirty things about women, but do they write the most filthy, nastiest texts in the history of texts? People, if you had not read those texts, please Google those texts and read those texts. You will be shocked how bad those texts were. Shocked. Okay, let's read some of these. I'm, I'm going to fall behind here, so I'm going to try to catch up. Raleigh, Wellborn, how you doing? Thank you for being here. If, uh, if same show, I'm thinking he's a real low life, uses people for views and publicity, promotes himself, tries to get himself and that shit show over, been for a decade and still not over. And there's a few of them. Listen, when you deal it, when you deal, there's some good people. Uh, uh, Roma, Roma has a very good show, good show, great show. He puts out great stuff. But you got these people like Hannibal. You got these people that will do the, do the, they don't care. They have no uh, emotional feelings about uh, what happened to these young boys and how they were being, uh, what did this company was doing to them. Uh, he, br he brings on this clown, Bill Anderson from uh, California, and he goes, oh, I seen Mel out there. He never had ring boys with him. Mm. See, these are people that they they want the WWE to love them so much, but here's where they messed up. Vince ain't around no more. The WWE will not exist soon. That name will be gone. 
Yeah. Remember I said that. TKO bought that. They're going to change that name of that company, especially after the documentaries come out. Because a WWE is part of Vince McMahon. So you yeah, exactly. See, you, know, you had the WWF, you had the WWE. And they were both part of a man that is so demented and twisted. And people say, oh, Lee, you just want a revenge going after you damn straight. Because he allowed, Vince McMahon's a horrible man. And I could say to most people, most of you people that don't like me in the wrestling world, you never even sat in the same room with Vince McMahon. You never met Vince McMahon. You don't know nothing about him. You don't know him personally. Yeah. What do you, what is your, what's your thoughts on someone like The Rock? You know, The Rock obviously got, you know, it was beneficial for his career to be in the WWE, but he also comes across as this guy that's, uh, you know, that supposedly moral, ethical type guy. Why didn't he say anything about this? Is it? Okay. So how can he be moral and ethical when his whole life is based on a fraud? Good point. He has been on steroids his whole life. Yeah. He, he's fake. His body's fake. He's off steroids now. You see how skinny he's gotten people? I don't know if you've seen him in the last couple months. I have. If you build an image, and same with Hulk Hogan, if you build an image and that's not who you are, you create, you become that monster. What makes, yeah. you so what makes you so ethical? Yeah, and, and I think where, where I'm coming from is not so much ethical, but, you, you know, he's one of these guys that's always about inspiration. Inspiration is, I guess, what I'm trying to say. He's always been one to say, oh, you can you could do it. You just need to put in the work, all that stuff, all the, po the positive type messaging that comes from him. And then he doesn't do anything or say anything about um, what, the organization he was part of d did, you know, that's what I don't understand. Well, well, he's you, un you, yeah. You, but you got the ultimate warrior. Mm -hmm. well, ultimate warrior couldn't wrestle for more than five minutes without being exhausted because mm -hmm. he was like, he was a, he was a fraud. Mm -hmm. He was full of steroids. He was fake. You know, uh, what you see now, if you look at what WWE is doing now, the wrestlers are much better technically. They're not better mm -hmm. entertain. They're not better entertainers, but they're much better technically, and you could see that most of them aren't on the juice anymore. Right, uh, and so it, they're not these big monsters they used to be. Now it's entertainment. Now it's like building up the plot, the plan. Uh, women have become a big part of wrestling, um, but but if you look at, I was I haven't been watching modern day wrestling. I just started because I have this show, and that's my job. And I'll tell you what, some of the matches I've seen lately have been phenomenal. I mean, yeah, and, and these guys weigh like not even 200 pounds. Yeah, I think what it is that uh, Vince McMahon always, he came from the era or what he wanted. He always had this opinion that bigger's better. Yeah, he, al he always did that. And then uh, now that he's not there, you know, you've got more of the, you know, steroid being out in the open and so the thing that i'm seeing is yeah technically they're much better you know the entertainment value that's not there you don't have really that you don't have like a hulk hogan or a um what is it like a a dwayne okay, johnson gotta, or whatever i gotta put this up so eso creative why wouldn't you go on and debate him there are so many sides there's no so there's no st sides so to child molestation there's no side Okay, that man is defending someone who is guilty of something. That man has been doing it for for six for what since nineteen nineties. There's no de he doesn't deserve me debating him. I'm not going on anybody's show and building up their show because they can't build it up their own. That show they've been working on that show for ten years trying to build it, and it's in the same position. They can't do a live with more than ten people. Okay, tell me if I'm wrong. And what this comes down to now, you see that some old man like me come into the wrestling genre, and all of a sudden I got good numbers. I've got 130 people in here right now. And all these 
all these people with the sheets and stuff, these all these are old time wrestling geeks. They're all upset about it because they can't do it. Yeah. But you know, the, the channel that I came from was a mob channel. James runs it now. And we get 80,000 views every how many are we on for the last two days in the mob channel? Yeah, almost 90,000, like 88. 90,000 for two days. Mm-hmm. 90,000 views, people. And we'll get this channel built that way, to that level, too. Okay. And James has decided that he was going to take over the mob channel. And I, I'm here. Okay, this is what I always wanted to do. I always want, I'm 63 years old. I want justice for my brother before I go into the hole. Anybody that wants to debate me about something that happened, I'll, here's, here's what I'll tell them. Watch the documentaries coming out and debate that, debate facts. All you had to do was come be nice about it, not sneaky. And then after you had this creep on, you attacked my brother who's dead. So to me, you're a piece of crap. You're my enemy now, and I cannot stand you. And anybody that ever platforms on your show will never come on this show. I don't care who they are. If they go on your show, they will never be on this show because you guys are wrestling fanboys. What does that mean? You're guys that you are guys that will do anything to make it in wrestling. And you don't realize you got on the bad side here. You got on the Vince McMahon side here. Vince McMahon is done. There's no coming back for Vince. Yeah, please hit the like button, everyone. Uh, yes, please hit the like button. Thank you, James. And uh, yeah. Baby Snake, $2. Thank you. I appreciate the donations coming in. I'm kind of surprised. Yeah, thank I didn't you. expect that today. No, that's nice. Uh, thank thank you. you. And guys, I don't want to come off kind of harsh, but, you know, when, when you start seeing things, you know, my brother was a good man. He had three beautiful daughters. Uh, and he, he had a horrible ending to his life. He did a couple interviews before he passed away with a couple good wrestling people. And they talked about what he said. Mm. But this guy that wants his clicks, it wasn't, you know, he says, I'm a friend of the show. He called me a friend of the show. If I'm a friend of your show, I don't want to be your friend. <laughs> okay. And one thing you're going to learn about me, my man. I've been in some wars on here online, wars that you can't even imagine. I got Sammy Gravano that talked about putting a bullet in my head. Sammy Gravano's son smacked me in the face. If I'm not worried about Sammy Gravano, why the hell would I be worried about you? Yeah, the, you know, even the, you know, even the biggest defenders of Vince acknowledge what happened with the ring boys. You know, that's what's. That's what's surprising to me is someone that it's like the per like Miss Phillips has been brainwashed, you know. No, maybe Ms. Phillips, it, yeah, Miss Phillips is, is a victim. Maybe who knows? He's a victim of stupidity. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, he has to get that wedding ring off his hand. They called yeah. him Mrs. Phillips for like fifty years. You know, it was always <laughs> that one guy. It's Epstein needed that person too, the guy that would go out and look around and get and, and, and help help find ring. That's boys. what Jisling you know, Maxwell or whatever her name was, right? Would find yeah. the girls for him. Okay. There's a Coca-Cola bottle. Oh, there is one. <laughs> it's too funny. Okay, so let's go. I'm going to start pulling more. So, okay, listen. So, I'm sorry, man. You can defend them all you want. Okay? I know what I heard. It was despicable. I heard it this morning. I wasn't going to even discuss this. But when I heard with that, my stomach turned. If you say something negative about my brother, I will come after you, and I don't give a shit who you are. So you know what? I did them a favor. Now they have a show to do on Thursday. I gave them a little extra. I like that. I like being in little battles like this. It's fun. <laughs> I'm doing them a favor even talking about their failure show. They're three people. Oh, we got 149 in the house. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it, guys? Huh? 
You know, you could be friends of this show and actually be on here talking and, and, and getting more people to your show, but you prefer to talk about dead people. Okay, let me pull up some of these. Okay, remember when Vince uh, made wrestlers come out and kiss his... Do you guys remember that? A mm. Monday night where he took down his pants, they had to come out and kiss his butt. Tell mm. me that. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> and like I said, once again, uh, these are popping up now. Thank you very much, Angel. I appreciate it. Solar Marshall, I will never forget Vince uh, humiliating the wrestlers the way he did. What a sicko. Yes. And you know... Look at, think about, think about what happened to Ashley Massaro. She yeah. went across, she went, she went overseas and she got assaulted on a military base. They, then they come back and they admitted that it happened. And then they, they, they treated her like garbage. They didn't give it a pro proper uh, therapy for it. And that woman in 2019 hung herself. Yeah. Okay. Chris Benoit hung himself after he, he murdered his, supposedly murdered his wife and his child. You know, we can go on and on here, people. If you think this is normal stuff, this is a corporation that's gotten away with stuff for so long. And it's one family. It's not just Vince McMahon. It's the family. Because they were all part of it. They all knew what was going on. But, you know, these people that attacked my brother, you don't have enough guts to say that because you're afraid of, the. you know, you might get... You know, got these wrestlers coming in and talking about Pat Patterson. Oh, he's just said dirty things. No, Pat Patterson was a serial sexual harasser at work. How many wrestlers have come on here and talked about the things that Pat Patterson's did to them? Right. So yeah. many. And it's still right. not enough. They still want to defend Pat Patterson. Yeah. Yeah, he'd stare at their crotch and lick his lips, oh, oh, all oh, types oh, of oh, stuff. All, all sorts of things. Leave his, he would leave keys at the, uh, at the desk, and uh, he would tell people, if, uh, if you want to rise up in this company, here's the key I'm up in the room. Uh, he would tell them, I'm a catcher, not a pitcher. He would tell them all sorts of stuff. Can you imagine, uh, you know, they talk about sexual harassment in the workplace. This guy was probably, quite possibly, one of the worst sexual harassers in the workplace in history. Yeah. You know, the WWE, what they've done in history, you're, not talk you're talking decades. You know, well, and, and then you had Terry Garvin. I think he might have been the worst reading this. Terry Garvin, Terry Garvin was definitely the worst. Because he, and then he was another one that, so he would tell these guys, and I just read this, so he basically wanted to perform on the guy, and he would say, well, it's okay, to, I can do it. Just look at a Playboy while I do that, and stuff like that. I mean, it's it's just weird that that guy was just a, a deviant for whatever reason, you know. Okay, Dietro says... Lee Cole, is Vince McMahon being targeted for these allegations because of his uh, uh, vocal support for, uh, I'm not going to say the name, I'm not going to get this political. No, absolutely not. Are you kidding me? Look at all the things he's done, John. Look at all yeah. the things he's done. Has anybody noticed how quiet Ric Flair has been? Yeah, I haven't heard much from him since... Uh... He got it since uh, the incident with Gene Barello, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was just crazy. Okay. Well, so anyway, well, Ric Flair is, uh, uh, he's, he's pushing 80 years old. Uh, I guess he's trying to get as much money as he can because he spends, he spends money quicker than he gets it. And, yeah. um, but, you know, he hasn't come out. There's a few people that haven't come out and said anything. And I'm sure they have their reasons. Yeah. The worst 
the worst people, like if you take Rock and John Cena, these mm. are two powerhouses. Yeah. I mean, these are two guys that are wealthy beyond, <laughs> at least Rock, one thing about Rock compared to Cena, Rock knew when to back off and, and not talk no more. Yeah. Then C Cena went on to Howard Stern's and mm. was, was literally talking about what a great guy Vince was. You know, it's, it's just, I know he made you a millionaire. I know he made uh, John Cena. If it wasn't for Vince, you probably, I don't know. I don't know where you'd be working, but you wouldn't have a million dollars in the bank. Hmm. Vince, you can say whatever you want about Vince, but Vince created a lot of millionaires. He but did. At the same time, Vince McMahon also destroyed a lot of people. So, you know, he had a, his favorites. Triple H was his favorite. And let's talk about that. For 20 years, he mentored Triple H. Does, do people think that this investigation is not going to come back on Triple H? No, oh, wow. You know, he mentored him for 20 years. They were together all the time. He treated, he treated Triple H better than he treated his own son. That's what I was going to say, that he, treat, he preferred, he picked Triple H over his own son, Shane, you know. Yeah, yeah. Pat Patterson was not a gay man. Pat Patterson was a predator. He was not a gay man. Okay, gay men are not predators. That's a, that's their lifestyle. This is guy was a predator. He preyed on weak people that wanted to advance. Uh, and 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 we we kind of have an idea in our head who some of those weak people were. Guys that were around the w, uh, WF and WWE slash WWE, and people were like, what the hell? They're not even good jobbers. What are they doing here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Another fat, bald Italian. How you doing, my man? It's good to see you here. Thank you for showing up. Tony B, uh, WC Nitro, Chic 1990s, early... Okay. Someone anonymously posted this today. The former athlete turned actor that has been preparing for a major scandal. His teams are spending mil mil uh, spending millions regarding a lawsuit that involves his former boss and mentor. Hmm. That's a, that's a very good, you know, something, Ian Drew Dice Clay. <laughs> I like that mm -hmm. name. Ian D Drew Dice Clay. That's, a, that's some good stuff right there, what you just wrote. Because how will Triple H defend himself when they come for him? Look at John Leo Laurinaitis. I mean, mm -hmm. he literally, John Leo Laurinaitis said, I was made to go over there and be with that woman. I was made to do these things. And I got I owe an apology. I made a mistake. John Laurinaitis is no longer with the WWE. A couple people put that out. I, I phrased it wrong. Uh, and I, I uh, apologize for that. But George, John Laurinaitis, the, this is a guy that the things that he was doing behind the scenes with these women, uh, and then he's he wants us to believe that Vince said, get over there or I'm going to fire you. Go have sex with that woman. God, that's just, that he, doesn't, I don't believe, I don't believe him. And then, um, you know, and then, Again, you can't. Uh, the other complicit person is uh, his wife. Talking about uh, Vince's oh, wife, my God. you yeah. know. And Wilfredo says this. Hello, Lee uh, Lee Lee Coke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, John John Laurinaitis uh, will not go down. Uh, he is not a victim. Justice for Nell Grant, Ring Boys, Ashley Massaro, come forward, take down Vince McMahon. Yeah, Vince McMahon. And you know what's you know who took down Vince McMahon though, James. Who's that? Vince McMahon. No, oh, that's true. I mean, when he got out, after he paid off those lawsuits, those lawsuits in 2023, if he just stayed away and let his family and let the people in, the, in power uh, sell the company, and he would have still got billions of dollars. Do you know, I was reading where his, he's worth three and a half billion dollars. Yeah. Wow. There was no there was no reason for him to come back. There was no reason for him to stop. No matter what the deal is with Janelle Grant, there was no reason for him to stop paying Janelle. 
Right. None. That $2 million he wanted to stop paying Janelle, how much money do you think $2 million has cost Vince McMahon? Oh, my gosh. Just look at the attorney fees so far. I mean, it's been and, more than $2 million just for that. Yeah. It, his freedom. It, it could cost him mm -hmm. his freedom. It cost him his relationship with his family. I mean, it can cost him so many things. Oh, and just so people know, every Saturday at 4 Eastern, there will be a live show here. Uh, and then we're going to do two two shows in membership. You can go over there. We're going to do – so we will be doing lives. But once a week, every Saturday at 4 Eastern, you will see us here. I don't know if James will be with me all the time because ever since he took over that channel, that's, that's really busy. He's been mm -hmm. kind of acting kind of stuck up. No. <laughs> yes, yeah. I don't know if he wants to hang with the little guy. You know, he's got <laughs> he's got uh, six times as many subs as I got people. Well, you're getting oh. more views on your videos. <laughs> well, well, yeah, you're, you're getting you got, really good views on the videos. You got yeah. eighty-eight thousand views in the last two days, James. Yeah. I, I, stop trying to make me feel good. Yeah. Oh, John well, said, John, I Lee, I read the text. John, you read the text. Tell me. I know, and don't give me no John Wolf answer, John. Uh, what did you think of those texts? Did you ever write texts like that to a woman, John? Maybe <laughs> I shouldn't ask you that because there's probably a good chance you wrote some kind of text to women. But <laughs> John's been, people, I, I, I kid with John, but he's been around for a long time in the mob genre. Uh, he's known as being a little kooky, but he's he's clever like a fox. Let's put it that way. Yeah. What does uh, Vince's, what did the kid, his children think of him? How's that evolved? You know, Stephanie's well, look, he, look, well, he's made them billionaires. He has. He's, he's, he's put, he's been very, he, they've become a big part of the company. Uh, they got to love him for that. But I think that when he came back uh, after he left, he let his daughter down. She left the company at that point. Yeah. And, 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 uh, her attitude, she knew about the whole Janelle Grant thing. She was mm -hmm. there. She, 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 she's the one that took a care of Janelle Grant over those, that time. So she was there. She knew. So she's complicit yeah. too then. Oh, without a doubt. Oh, yeah. But I think she's complicit, but I think that she knew what was going on. And that's why the, they decided to settle all those lawsuits at one time, because mm -hmm. you got to remember the two people that knew were her and, uh, Triple, and H. triple H. They, they yeah. knew. Vince went to Triple H and said, Look, this is my girl. I want you guys to take good care of her. I want her working in the law department. I mean, but everybody there knew who she was. They knew that was Vince's girl. I mm. mean, Vince bought her a Mercedes. Right. All of a sudden, she shows up driving a Mercedes. Right. And so, how did, uh, so, when you look at Stephanie, she, I mean, I, I had the feeling when she resigned or whatever left that it wasn't on good terms. She was, her and her father weren't on good terms. Oh, she so, was furious that her father came back. Yeah. Because when her father came back, that meant she lost her power mm. because Vince McMahon's in charge. Vince McMahon's not going to let nobody be his boss. Yeah. And that's why he did what he did when he, when he screwed the shareholders over. He didn't want anybody to be his boss. He wanted, to, and that's when Emmanuel outsmarted Vince. He knew, Emmanuel knew everything that was going to go down. Yeah. He was much smarter than Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon was always the smartest guy in the room until he met Emmanuel. Emmanuel became the smartest guy in the room. Vince wasn't used to that. You know, Vince was probably smiling, laughing, and talking nice to Emmanuel. And Emmanuel had everything going in the background. You know, so why why did he come back? Why what was the reason to come back? I just don't understand. Because he want because he wanted to sell the company to who he wanted. Yep. He wanted to be back on the board. And out of the bidders that were coming in, the only one that can guarantee that he would be put back on the board was Emmanuel. Was mm. uh Endeavor. Endeavor said, if you if if you get this sale through, we'll stay on the board. We'll let you stay on the board. And then uh, once, then one week after they came back, one week after they rung the bell on Wall Street, one week, Vince was out. 
So doesn't mm. that tell you Emmanuel outsmarted them? Yeah, it does. And, you know, and the other thing is that didn't the Saudis, they had a bigger, they offered more they money, were, didn't they? They'll give everything. See, this is why Khan was upset. Khan knew that, mm -hmm. you know, and he knew that the Saudis had all that money on the table. Yeah. But the Saudis wouldn't didn't want Vince back. No, it wouldn't have been. That's what the problem. And the Saudis, the Saudis were going to go back behind Khan. Yep. That was going to be their guy in the WWE. I see. Yep. So you had, you know, so the Saudis, the Saudis going to outbid anybody. You know that. Yep. I mean, they can go to the Saudis and get as much money, but they're like, yeah, okay, but you know, we're paying that kind of money. It's our company. Right. Everybody thought for about four or five months that the Saudis, the deal was done. Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah. At first. And then, just, yeah, then it just disappeared. It just disappeared. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I thought, though, with Endeavor, it made sense to, to co-brand with the uh, – you know, with uh, MMA, you know, it just. Yeah. You know, people might think I'm crazy for saying this, but I feel, I don't feel you'll directly see Dana White work in the W. Dana, I feel Dana White will be behind the scenes building that like he built the UFC into mm. a respectable program. I could definitely see that. Uh, you know, another guy, Dana White, a lot of people like him. A lot of people don't, but one thing you can't do, Dana White took this little tiny thing and turned it into a monster. Uh, yeah. Let's just hope that he, that, let's just hope Dana doesn't have a bunch of stuff in his closet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just think that he, you know, just the way that he promotes, I mean, when you look at who could, who could be a, who could really help WWE, uh, you know, one, they're going to have to change the name. The brand is tarnished because of Vince. They just want to get away from it. But Dana White, I could see Dana White being involved in the promoting side of it, some of the business side, because he, he is uh, good at what he does. Okay, listen, guys, I'm going to put drop a link down here. Anybody that wants to come up, if I see your face and if I know who you are, I will let you up here. If I'm suspicious that you're going to come up here and show me your ding a -ling, uh <laughs> I'm not going to let you up here. I'll give you my phone number. You could show me it in the phone. My, my <laughs> okay. So I, I hope they people don't take that serious. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we got there. Come on up. No dinglings. <laughs> please hit the like button, please. Please yes. hit the like. Yeah. Please do that. You know, it's very important that you hit the like people before, you know, uh, that's one of the. Uh, Okay, you've been hitting it good. I re, I re, let's get that to a hundred, please. Okay, we got a hundred and forty-three people in here. Thank you a lot. And you know what, people, we're going to be up here in a couple of weeks, and we're going to be averaging three hundred on our lives on sa on, on Saturday afternoons. Remember, I said that because if you put out good products, we, I have a great interview coming up with someone very close to Ric Flair. Mm. Very close to Ric. So, uh, and you're going to recognize him when he shows up. So we're going to reach out to people. We're not going to bring any of these dirt bags on that are here praising Vince and saying, uh, talking, talk, talking about how great he is. This is not a pro Vince channel. And you guys know this, you know, I'm going to be straight up. This is not yeah. Lulu. Lulu, I cannot see your face. It says device not connected. Okay. Well, for I agree, Lee, WWE's, yes, it's cleaner now. They're definitely cleaning it up. I mean, and the wrestlers are so much better. They're not being, they're not working like they used to work where they would uh, have to work 300 shows a year. Yeah. You know, uh, I believe I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that they're ending the private contractor thing. They're actually paying these wrestlers now. Uh, Lulu, you can't get in here right now because uh, your device ain't connecting. So if you can get it connected, come back. And then the what? So the I forgot what I was going to say. Well, that's because you're old. <laughs> okay. Let's see. 
the Sheik says, I don't really follow wrestling anymore. Miss can't be wrong. I started watching the 60s and 70s. And, it, you know, yeah, the entertainers in wrestling were so good back in the day. If you could work a mic and, you know, there's certain people that were mediocre wrestlers, but they could work the mic great. Right. And then you then you had wrestlers that were great, but they couldn't work the mic. So they never advanced in the business. I mean, you had to know how to work the mic. Okay. So what's the plan now for WWE as far as um, TV contracts and stuff? Do, has that they been just decided? Signed, oh, they just signed a huge contract with uh, Netflix. And, they're not, and that's going to stay in place because that's Emmanuel. I mm. mean, you, you got to remember, Emmanuel's and his people had ties to the White House, to Barack Obama, very powerful people. And also, like, a, was it a lot of the agents, right? Weren't they affiliated with Creative Artists Agency or whatever with the with the agents of celebrities? Okay. Hey. Baby Snakes, hey, how you doing? Hi, sorry. My name's kind of weird, but I don't know. <laughs> how are you? Doing it's good. good to see you. You're, you're new to me. Uh, I am. I go on a podcast called In Your Head Wrestling Radio. Right. And they've been around for 20 years. So they've uh, interviewed like Harley Race and Terry Funk and all. So we're familiar with a lot of things going on. Yeah. With your situation, just by osmosis over the years and all the dirt that they've heard. So I'm just really interested in what your uh, perspective is. Well, my perspective is that uh, you have a lot of victims in this company. Uh, you have a lot of good people in this company. Um, and then you have the people in the middle. There's like three layers of people here. <laughs> uh, but the, it's, the, it's the few bad ones like Vince McMahon and that, and those, that group of people that have really, uh, you know. You know what I think more than anything, Baby Snake, is that when you think about the amount of people that have died in this company... Uh, the amount of things that happened, very great wrestlers, famous names uh, like Henning and uh, Benoit. These guys were like, it's a shame that this all went down, but it's a re the reason it went down, a lot of this had to do with steroids. It's not even about using steroids. They were using them at a level that was unbelievable. I'm sure, especially Kurt, Kurt Henning. Too. Like, it was sad. I loved Kurt Henning and Mr. Perfect. And his father lived his father lived so far beyond that and had to live his life without his son. And sure. and he taught his son how to wrestle. He would he loved his son. Yeah, Larry. And, yeah. X, yeah. And, and that's a that's a very sad thing. And uh um you can go on and on here. It's like I never yeah. thought that that I would be here uh doing this. Uh I was enjoying my mob channel. And then when this happened with Vince, I put up one video, it got like 70,000 views. And then I put up another one and I'm like, uh, I said, you know, that's when I said to James, you know what? Uh, my brother has died and I promised him that uh, I would get his word out there as much as I can. And that's what I'm doing now. That's the main reason I'm here. But at the same time, I, at one time I was a big wrestling fan, you know, uh, I, I'm no longer, uh, the other day, I watched my first wrestling match in years, and I said, "Wow, these guys are really talented." And, and it seems like they they they're trying to go in a different direction with the entertainment they're putting out. And what do you think about that? You're around it for all these years, definitely. Well, with the business, a lot of fans have gotten really sick of WWE's like product or whatever. Like, and uh, yeah, so a lot of a lot of the yeah, a lot of the newer wrestlers are very, like, technically, like, they know their crap. They know how to, like, all of them can jump out of the ring and land somehow. You know, all of them can do, like, all the moves and stuff. Like, it isn't my cup of tea, really. I like the older right. stuff. Like, Oh, me too. I, but I was looking at this guy called Gunther the other day. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, wow, could that guy wrestle? So they're bringing them in from the different from like colleges and from um, 
people that actually have a background in wrestling in high school, mm -hmm. college, right? Somewhat. It's it's like just the same as it's always been. They'll bring in like circus freaks who are like seven foot four, but who can like right. can't can't like uh, step over their own foot to walk. But they'll hire them, or they like. But there are like very like proficient wrestlers though. There's uh, Gable Stevenson, which is like he's like not joining the WWE because he's like still competing in like world uh, like wrestling events and stuff. Like, so do you think that this thing going on with Vince McMahon has opened the door for those other organizations to grow now? Definitely, in my opinion, which is poetic justice because of what he did to all of the, the existing territories in the 80s. Yeah. Right. Like, I think, like, but do you I, know the NWA might be the weakest of those? I don't know. If uh, ever... I mean, you got to look at it in terms of today. Like, NWA yep. ruled the 19th or that the 20th century right you know there's mlw and like all kinds of other ovw like right where yeah that's what i'm saying is those will be the other ones things. that will yeah i'm saying those will be the ones that you know billy corgan or whatever his name was in wa yeah. he's screwing that organization up they're not uh yeah. they're not going to be they're going to be the last in line in my opinion True. They they're me, like oh go ahead. I, I was gonna ask you, tell me some of the shows on here that you think do uh that have been doing wrestling justice. Uh they're not they're not killing anybody, they're talking out they're being Definitely. honest, they're, they're talking down the middle. It, tell us some of those shows that you think people should be watching. I have been watching Memphis Wrestling, like Jerry Lawler's old Memphis Wrestling, but right. new yeah. It's it's like it's great. It's great. It's like it's on YouTube live when it broadcasts or it might be a taping, but whatever. They're putting and I've been watching it since especially since the whole Vince McMahon thing came out. It makes me sick to watch WWE and all the cesspool, whatever. But I watched MLW and like they have like characters like like really good wrestlers. I think because of all of these the abundance of wrestling out there that there are a lot of better wrestlers so there there's a lot it's kind of spreading back out but uh definitely memphis is really good uh mlw is really good like there's gcw i don't and know I what like and I like to tell you one thing: if any of those people ever want to come on a show with me Definitely. and talk about their organization, Heck yeah. or let them know. I, I would, I would love to, because you guys listen. When I went into the mob genre, I knew very little about the mob genre. Everybody laughed at me and said, "Oh, I will never survive there." When I left there, my show was above everybody's except two people. Were they and like a wrestling guy coming to try to do our mob stuff, like? No, no, because I got into feuds with the right people. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, it, 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 with John, with Sammy Gravano, and uh, but here I don't want to get into feuds. I just want to talk about uh, the truth. Like, well, I look at this show with this guy Roma. I yeah. love that show because he puts. I like when you got guys like that because they they weren't like top level wrestlers, but they weren't bottom level wrestlers. They had great yeah. talent. They never People know who Paul really. Roma is, you know. Like, if you and, watch and, wrestling in the '80s, you know who Paul Roma is. I grew him up. I grew up with him, and yeah. and I, I just found like watching him and seeing the beef that he has with this Powers guy. And here we are, years later. <laughs> one one guy was Powers was the company man, and mm -hmm. Roma was like, it was not the company man, you know. And, and I kind of like that. Uh, That's crazy. Uh, yeah, it's like power and glory or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It, it's so it, goofy. It, like, but how serious it all is, too. Like, ah, crazy. And this but, whole Vince McMahon has given this genre a boost by what's going on now. Once he did this, once this whole thing went down, all these shows that weren't getting numbers are getting numbers now. 
Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Because, like, there are a lot of wrestling fans, like me included, who are like, I love wrestling. Like, I haven't necessarily liked Vince McMahon. When the Attitude Era came on, I was turning, like, 15 in the 90s. Like, all the rock and Stone Cold. And I was trying to get a girlfriend. And one thing that didn't help you in trying to get a girlfriend is like guys like uh, pulling down their pants and spilling beer all over their yeah. like that, so so I quit watching them because I was disgusted. But like I don't know, I'm kind of glad that I don't know, I'm kind of glad that WWE might have the chance to get like slashed, burned, bleached. And Ashified. Yes. So, so too, like, yeah. there's yeah. a lot of money behind. There's a lot of money behind it. it. Ain't going away. But I predict this. I predict the name WWE is going to be going away. That's uh, really. I, I really hope so. For uh, I would see so. that be, because this is nothing. See, I know a lot of things going on behind the scenes right now with the legal stuff, and I'm going to tell you this much right now. There's so much stuff coming down to, to, down the pipe. So much stuff. Uh, and a lot of people are going to be uh, that we see right now in these companies are not going to survive it. Uh, anybody that was around Vince McMahon was his buddy or uh, a lot of people knew what he was doing for a long time. So they're kind of, you know, they're complicit, too. And and who's going to turn on Vince? I mean, uh the Triple H thing. I mean, Triple H was very, that was Vince's mentor. He treated them better than his own son. So yeah. what happens there when they come? Because you know. He might Triple go H to jail was... too, though. You know, if he was involved in the conspiracy, oh, yeah. you know. Triple H is like a, he, he knows how to put on a good front and shut his mouth. But he is just like the biggest, like. Well, we had a show about bag, him. Yeah. Scumbag kind of guy. Like he'll, he'll, he'll. He'll be like, shut the fuck up. I don't know. I've just seen too many, like, where he isn't supposed to be on camera things. Like, he got punked on Ashton Kusher, just punked once. And I did, I edited a video where I took out all the funny parts where, like, they're going like, oh, look, he put his hand in the turd. Like, I took out all the funny parts, and it's just Triple H being like, you better go in that fucking room, put your head between your fucking legs. And kiss your ass until I get back fucking in there. And he was like being serious, you know? It's like, yeah. Well, this wow. dude's a fucking crazy fucking person. Yeah. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. And the whole thing. He was thi talking to whole... strangers, you know? I was like, what the fuck? Pardon my language. And the whole thing with uh, that that uh, whole relationship with Stephanie was really weird. And the, the way they treated uh, China and. Uh, yeah. Uh, how one day she just went, she was fired one day while she was still on top. I mean, because well, she was more like they, shunned than it, shunned. Yeah. Or, yeah. I mean, that's another one. That's another one. Mm -hmm. And so she many, been, it's like, sorry. Yeah, no, no problem. There was so many people like that, that ha if that's happened to uh, people that you would never think that he would bring the hammer that on. Vince McMahon always wanted to prove to people that I could fire you at any time. It doesn't matter who you are. Uh, I'm more valuable than you. When, when, when Hulk Hogan left, uh, people thought that they were never going to recover. But then one, remember, day, yeah. the one day Steve Austin walked in the ring and boom. You know, just like that. Because <laughs> the WCW was kicking their butt there for a while when they first uh, came out. Yeah, and Steve Austin, that's an interesting story because, you know, when, I remember when he was down in Dallas, he was in the, you know, before all of this, and he, he was a wooden wrestler. He, you know, he didn't really have personality, but then that changed when he got with Vince. Well, he got fired, and then he got pissed off, and he was given a live mic in ECW, so he kind of yeah. followed the momentum. Trend. Yeah, and well, momentum. It's one of the biggest things, and like this. Hopefully, this case keeps building momentum. 
Well, we have a, we have quite a few women on, that are in this show right now, which I I like that because they give their version. Maggie Lusk says Cena's open love letter to Vince was sickening, and it was an open love letter. <laughs> you seen how uh, how uh, John Cena talks to like the Bellas on like Total or on like the Total Divas show, and John yeah. Laurinaitis is on that show. You see how like chauvinistic those two. Are John's like, uh, Nikki, you didn't make the bed, make it, duh. Like, he's just like a fucking dickhead, anyway. What do you, th what do you think of John Laurinaitis? How, how involved and how creepy is he? Not nah, like when I was watching, I was like, who the fuck is this guy? I swear a lot, sorry. Like, but I was like, oh, it's Animal's brother, a and I'm like, oh, the he's part of the. The, the blondes no he's part of the who who the fabulous one whatever i was like who the hell is this guy like it blew it always confused me who john laurinitis was and why he was anything yeah he's but like, i think he knows everything that went on well yeah no he's you know, obviously he's a sex about, camp he yeah, was the one yeah. wearing the mask and the ball gag yeah carrying vince's <laughs> dildos around he was like the <laughs> He's like, come on, come on. He's like, arr, arr. he's that guy. <laughs> when you yeah. when you think that we're we're talking about wrestling and and, we, and and we're talking about this stuff being thrown in, I mean, you would have pictured this at the ECW when they went in the ring and put everything on the line. I, I, all the action was going on outside with the with the WWF. It seemed like on the outside more than in the ring. You know. You didn't have your uh, like your sabus here and guys like that that would just put everything on the line in one night. True. Well, I think that may have been like ECW and a lot of them. You know, a lot of that is based on the personality of who runs the company. You know, and it was, you know, I know that what you're going to see with with the WWE. You know, I do think they'll change their name, but it's going to be more corporate. It's going to be kind of like. WCW to a point where that was that got a little more corporate. The thing was is that Vince create a culture that um, you know people emulated that within WWE. These people and that, I think that's where the problem was because it all started with Vince. His personality just overshadowed the whole organization. Well, you wouldn't let opinion. people sneeze in front of them, right? You wouldn't. You wouldn't let people like. He was, he was very controlling and domineering. Let me do it. And I can tell you when I yeah. when I met Vince when I met Vince McMahon the first time it was at uh, it was at Radio Center, uh, NBC, the NBC building in New York. And all I remember about him is Elizabeth was there too. And Elizabeth is a beautiful woman. I mean, yeah. back in 1992, she was absolutely beautiful. I think she's and, beautiful. I think. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And, and when she, but what I always remembered about Vince McMahon is he had an aura about him because when he got out of the, the limo, people gravitated toward him. And it was just yeah. a very weird because he was like, uh, you know, he was like the perfect male specimen, let's say. Built big, handsome, dressed in $2,000 suits. Uh, Talks people like a sportcaster. Too. Yeah, yeah, and uh, his an image. His image was just, um, yeah, and uh, you know, all of that was, and he's a master at manipulation. And so, bringing Ms. Elizabeth there, that you know, that was all done purposely. That was all done on purpose. It wasn't by accident or you know anything like well, that. Well, but, th that's when the negotiations had started, and at that point, they wanted uh, Elizabeth near tom i mean uh elizabeth was with tom in the in the green room elizabeth uh sat next to tom out in the audience when donna that, that donna new show, show went on uh i i stayed in the back because i refused to go out i i was against the settlement from the very beginning I what do you think her was, role was what do you think vince wanted to that she was there to calm him down to make no, at that be a time, mothering at that, purpose or what? Well, at that time they were protecting her from from Randy. Was that so, on right. Waldo? You're saying? No, this was on uh, Phil Donahue. Donahue, okay, okay, yeah. I've seen the, I've seen those. 
that you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. But that whole there was a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that day, because my uh, Barry Orton became a very good friend of mine, and I was kind of heartbroken because uh, Barry got mad at me because my brother was settling, and I said to my I said to Barry, I said Barry, this ain't my lawsuit. I'm give I'm here trying to. I told my brother not to do it, but it's still not my lawsuit. My brother wanted to go back and work with us. You know, people say, uh, one of these idiots the other day said, oh, Tom did it for the money. No, Tom's problem was he didn't do it for the money. He wanted his job more than anything. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's thing people don't understand is uh, maybe you can explain it, Lee. That's the biggest question is they don't understand. You know, he went through all that, you know, and he could have, like you said, got yep. millions, but well, why I'll, did he I'll, want to come back I'll, to? Well, let me. Get, here's what happened. I, I, um, the day of the the good negotiations on a Sunday, they all came into New York, right? Yeah. Vince wanted to meet at, into Avions of America. He wanted to meet with my brother, the lawyer. They didn't even know I existed at that time. So the Tom's lawyer called me that morning and said, uh, "We don't want you in the meeting. Stay at the hotel." I was like, "Okay." I trusted the lawyer. And the next thing I know, a couple hours later, Tom comes back to the hotel and uh, there's another lawyer there. He walks up to me and he goes, I can't believe your brother just did what he did. I said, what did he do? He says he settled. He, 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 he got back pay. And then I said to my I was really mad at my brother. I said, what did you do, Tom? And my brother gave me a hug and said, Lee, I just want my job back. I just want this to end. At that moment, when he said that to me, I was like, OK. And that's the way it's got to be. You know, it's his lawsuit, not mine. But but the people that I consider friends, like Phil Munchnik, uh, Barry O, uh, Bruno Sammartino, um, they, they were mad at me because they thought that I was behind it. And I wasn't. You know, it wasn't my lawsuit. I, I found the lawyer. I helped him put it together. And then right after that, Vince McMahon files a lawsuit against Phil Munchnik where he says that Phil Munchnik and I were conspiring together to destroy the WWE. Uh, giving me that, at that time, I was a wanted felon running from the United States Marshal. How the hell was I even thinking? I just, All this stuff happened by accident. It just happened. It just happened. And people act like, you know, I was sitting there making this big plot in my mind. No, it wasn't no plot. You know, it's like one thing when, as soon as the lawyer was announced and there was a, uh, and they said it was coming from Utica, New York, uh, everything moved so fast. With so the minute that happened, three days later, I'm sitting across from Vince McMahon, just like that. You know, and uh, I didn't want to be there because on the on the on the last day we were together, Vince and I were arguing uh, because he broke into my answering machine without my permission and they got all my information yeah they got all my information out of there and everything it's like no this was not pleasant because this my brother and i we were very close and this tore our relationship apart for years um because of all this you know this is not like an easy thing but i i think to myself now if my brother could see what's happening now he'd be smiling knowing that that vince mcmahon's going to get what's coming to him I have a brother. He's 11 months younger than me. He can't stay like, I'm not comparing him to your brother, but he can't stay out of pro trouble. Like he's been in and out of prison like um, five or six times and we're 40. And I've been looking right. out for him my whole life and trying to do the best for him. So like I can relate with like really like my whole life, uh, every day I think about my brother and him sitting in prison right now and uh, whatever I could do to help him. And like, I could relate with you on that level because like, no matter what in life happens, I will always, every single day, think about my brother, like, and no matter where he is, what he's doing. And even if he's passed away. So like, that's one connection I have with you. That's, uh, that's all I have to say about that. So yeah, I want you to know about that. I appreciate that. And it's, yeah, it, 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 you know, my family had a lot of death because I lost uh, a, a sister and two brothers all within three years, all the youngest ones in my family. Uh, and um, Tom was 
just lost his two young siblings that he grew up with. Um, he had a lot going through his mind at that time. But, you know, people think, you know, when I have these weirdos with these uh, wrestling sheets say crap about me and they don't even know me, these are guys that, that think wrestling's real, you know, and uh, right. they grew up. These are guys that can never be wrestlers. So they, 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 they're in the sheets and the wrestling sheets and they're writing whatever they want. You know, I, I went on Hannibal show and did an interview, got 30,000 views. Everything was great. What do I notice the next two months? He's bringing on people on attacking me. So just like that, you know, and it's like, there's no loyalty between these people in that industry. Uh, and I was warned about it. Barry Orton told me. Barry paid, Orton, the paid ones. Yeah. Barry Orton told me, he said, Lee, I always remember Barry Orton telling me, he says, Lee, this is a very dirty business and there is no loyalty here. Very few people are loyal to you in the wrestling, uh, in the wrestling industry, especially the people with the sheets, because they all, they all want to kiss Vince's ass. They didn't want to attack Vince because if they attack Vince, where would they get their stories from? Yeah. Vince will cut you off. And if Vince cut you off, you're done. Especially if you had uh, a wrestling uh, sheet. Yeah, people are saying like that the young bucks and stuff are feeding Dave Meltzer wrong information, so he looks oh, bad. And trying to discredit him, like people yeah. are intentionally because of the internet, things go around a lot faster, and like people are fucking with Dave Meltzer's credibility right now. So yeah, well, uh, he lost that in about thirty-five years ago. To, yeah, uh, no. <laughs> you know, and. Uh, uh, and I could Brian do, Alvarez, not, I saw I'm, matches where he was like getting farted on by like Roddy Piper and stuff. It's like, yeah, I met I I I met Bar, uh, Brian Alvarez one time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was at a restaurant in Manhattan. Uh, it was a long time ago. Uh, I don't remember too much about him to say anything negative about him and stuff. Uh, but the, I, there are the people I could be very negative about because they talk crap about me. Uh, oh, Lee just was in it for the money, and it was a lawsuit. Of course, I was in it for the money. I ain't, but here's the problem, guys. I'm not in it for the money now. And when you're young, you look at the world a lot different than when you're older. You know, I'm 63. I could be dead tomorrow. I don't give two shits about money. My rent's paid. I got money in the bank. I got a nice car. I'm set for life. So I'm here for my brother. So you guys get... You guys have to understand that you're not dealing from with Lee from 30 years ago. You're dealing with this one. Whole different story, guys. Yeah, and I think a lot of people don't realize too that even with all of what your brother went through, he and I know at the end what happened, but he actually he had a very good career. He was around celebrities. He was a uh, a bodyguard. So, I mean, he was able to make a good life yeah. for him. And, and, here's, and here's what people don't realize. When Tom left that world, he became a, a bodyguard. He became a martial arts expert. He became, uh, he carried a weapon in New York City. He was the, he was, uh, the bodyguard for the president of Verizon Corporation. He bought a, a half million dollar home in Hopewell Junction. He had three daughters. He had a great life. Uh, and then it just fell apart emotionally and mentally. And that's what happens to people, SA survivors. You know, you can only run from the things that have happened to you in your life for so long, especially SA survivors. And that's why I'm not going to jump down Janelle Grant's throat because people say, uh, oh, she was there. She was willing to do this. Even if in the beginning, just say she was willing to do it in the beginning. Do you think she really wanted to be there with other men? You know, yeah. and, and did you see those texts, my man? Yeah. The, did you ever see the most? The, those I never read texts that disgusting in my life. That's like that's like serial killers if they wrote a diary. Like that's like if a serial killer wrote a diary. Yeah. Like, it's like Jeffrey Dahmer and John Wayne Gacy stuff, but he's a public uh, in front of a camera telling his own story on his own product guy. 
and he he wrote his own character, the devil character, Vince Mc, Mr. McMahon, in his own image. So we have we have a record of it for the rest of history now. Well, I named this channel dealing uh, wrestling with the devil based on Vince McMahon, but there's a uh, someone I think Lex Luger wrote a book or something called that. So I was under the assumption I wasn't going to be able to get it, uh, but there was no copyright on it. Oh yeah, good old so Lex, not copyright and shit. <laughs> 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 hey, he, those bodybuilder guys—they're not known for being smart. <laughs> yeah, and it's like. Uh, uh, and I have a lot of good stories about wrestling. I remember in 1992, yeah. we were talking about, I, I was wrestling. at WrestleMania. I was in 1992, I was at wrestling. We were talking about Animal. And my wife was a pretty little Puerto Rican girl. And she had it all going on. And uh, <laughs> she was in the back. And she's uh, all of a sudden, Animal's flirting with her and has his arm around her. And all I remember saying, well, I ain't doing nothing about that. <laughs> she's yours, dude. <laughs> Oh my god! At that moment, you, but yeah, it's kind of funny. No, ninety-two. Joking. They were like gods, like in the most badass yeah. dudes in the world. And he was he was a monster, you know. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, animal was that that the road warriors were at their peak at that time. Yeah, and, uh, I was I was the biggest fan. Like in the comic books, they had full page ads like of like the road warriors because they were coming into WCW and stuff. Alyssa Owen says, I had to take off social media a couple days after reading those nasty texts. Uh, oh, it's, okay, yeah. uh, Wolf, Wolfredo Fernandez says, Janelle, uh, Janelle Grant's lawyer said more women are coming forward with lawsuits should be the ones that signed NDAs. Well, listen, NDAs mean nothing. James yeah, because there was, yeah. So an James NDA doesn't business, mean a, anything. Okay, James Sorry. is a businessman. James is a businessman. Tell us how powerful and strong NDAs are. Yeah, NDAs don't have have any power. Very, very little power. And the thing is, you got to realize that if there's any sort of of illegal activity, uh, it's invalidated. So, I mean, it's not like it's going to have any power in this circumstance. And also, these women, one of the problems are that they've been brainwashed. Victims of SA will, you know, they'll do things. They lose their whole dignity. It's just what they've had to endure. And they they almost, they feel like they deserve that. And that's, that it's okay. They don't, they, they're so close to it. They don't understand that. It's not okay. So an NDA has no legal bearing, especially in this circumstance. Wow. Definitely. So him by so by Vince committing crimes, it's negating the MDA, basically. Is that what you're saying, James? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I mean, he committed crimes, and so there's not going to be any um, legal uh, protection with the NDA. So that means that what that one that me and you have is worth nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it. Okay. I, yeah, I mean that. I mean, really, the thing. James and I it, actually have one. We have, we're business partners. And yeah, we have, we have one. Yeah, and, we have uh, one. Yeah, we built a business from nothing. We, we we have two successful podcasts, and we we started with nothing. Yeah, and yeah, and exactly. It's kind of funny. A couple of old farts like us. Not that you're as old as me, James, and your wife's a lot harder than a lot hotter than my my dog. But you know, <laughs> hopefully, I, I, li I live. With, no, I live with I live with a dog. He lives with a beautiful Spanish woman. That's what I met. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, anything else you'd like to say? Well, first of all, I'd like to say to you, baby. Um, my email is. Uh, wrestling with the devil at gmail.com right. awesome now i will and keep it you, like very like concise and what you need yeah all right go ahead if you Sorry. have any anybody in any of these organizations that would like to come in and talk about their organizations okay. or anybody that might have something to say on this you know consider this always an open door if they write me we could set something up 
okay. because I'm sure the people that are here would love to hear from people from other organizations, whether it's wrestlers or whatever. That's what we did on our mob channel. We built up a good rapport with people, and uh, I was very good friends with John Gotti's daughter. That helps. Uh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Well, I'll get off of here and let you guys get to your... I appreciate uh, it. You're welcome no, here thank anytime, you. man. Thank and you. you I'm email. so happy to like talk to you, and uh, I... Yeah, Good luck with all your stuff, and I hope to it's talk always again. great to meet new. Pe it's always great to meet new people, and uh, we're, we're, you, we consider you part of the show anytime you want to show up. Thank you. Take Have a great day. Man. You too. Yep. Thank you. So that's the great thing. You see that people, someone just shows up like that, and uh, uh, they have something to say. There's if anybody else wants to come in before we take off, there's a link. You're more than welcome to come on. Uh, as long as I can see your face uh, or kind of see who you are, um, we appreciate it. Let's read some more of these remarks before we close. Uh, okay. Do you think the lawsuit will extend to Sean or Stephanie? Uh, uh, I believe so, uh, Italian. I, I really believe so. Um, it's only a matter of time. Yeah, I think anyone that's close to um... – Vince that is aware of the behavior, aware of what he's done, they're they're in danger of of criminal prosecution. You know that's why I'm saying Triple H could be Stephanie. You know um, any of those that were close, John Laurinaitis. You know they're they're in danger of it because they were aware of it, and if it's proven it's a conspiracy of criminal behavior, then they can definitely be called out on it. Well, Fredo Fernandez, uh, Jerry McDivitt, Linda McMahon were accountable for Vince's crime. Of course they are. They were part of the covering it up, uh, without a doubt. I've worked, I've, I've dealt with all three of them. Uh, there's no, there's no doubt. I've, I've seen it with my own eyes, people. Yeah, Sheik, I wish Jerry, Jerry McDivitt covered, uh, uh, was part of covering up a lot of things, including with the women. Uh, uh, that were paid off and stuff. He knew all this stuff. I remember saying to Jerry McDivitt, uh, 1992, I said to Jerry McDivitt, uh, you're a father. You have these, you have children. How do you feel about Vince McMahon having this stuff done? And he says, well, he believed that Vince McMahon had nothing to do with the ring boy thing, even though Vince McMahon knew all this was going on with inside the company. Yeah. I mean, he reminds me of a mob mob lawyer. You know, that's why he reminds me. Yeah, you know, he's a hey. Listen, if, if you need a lawyer, that's if you need a lawyer, that's the guy to get a hold of. Brian, I just want to say, keep the, thank you, Brian. Appreciate it. If, Miss can't, can't be wrong. Thank you for putting that up. We appreciate it. Okay, I'm Enley. I love you, brother Tom. Rest, uh, rest easy, King. You've been doing what everyone would do. I'm with you. My brother, expose, expose, expose. Rain Condit, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Janet Wood, I used to think wrestling was only a Southern thing. <laughs> you know, the first time I ever watched wrestling, I was 12 years old. I was down in North Carolina, and I remember watching, uh, it was uh, Ernie Ladd, the Briscoe Brothers. Right. Uh, then that, That's when I first started watching wrestling. I went to visit my sister for the summer. I was very bored. And I would take a little black and white, sit down and watch. Uh, I guess that was not the AC. What, I forgot what organization that was for North Carolina. Yeah, I for I forgot too. It's um, but I think part of it eventually became like WCW. Eventually. Okay. Uh, when I used to spend nights outside the garden as a little boy to get front row tickets for the next month's wrestling match. There were many pedos. I saw older women sleeping with 16, 17-year-olds. Well, I don't even know how to touch that one, Italian. I really don't. Yeah. You know, though, you know, we talked about being Southern. You know, they would call it wrestling, you know, in the South originally. And then, but when you look at Canada, Canada's had a very strong presence in wrestling for you know, 80 years or more. It's just, you know, there's probably as much popularity of wrestling in Canada than, you know, in the South. So, uh, Tony B writes, all Italians were 
they were huge fans of Bruno San Martino used to wrestle in Madison Square Garden. He was from Pittsburgh, but he, he would wrestle in Madison Square Garden. They had a huge contingency of Italians coming in from Brooklyn, from Queens. Uh, probably half the gangsters from Brooklyn were sitting in there going, come on, Bruno, come on. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, you two would be proud to have the balls to tell the truth about the Ring Boy scandal. Yes, we will. And if if anybody wants to come looking for me, I will gladly give them James' address. Okay, James. Uh, I was trying to hit the. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Make your mark. Uh, let him come. You, which. Uh, Wish you think about calling some fearful Connecticut newspapers and tell them the story. You go, Lee, 100. You know something, Gary? The, the the newspaper industry isn't what it used to be. Now everything's online, and people all know, know these stories are there. This Vince McMahon story right now, I could tell you, is on fire. There's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, a lot. Let's not forget yeah. Owen Hart. Another, You know something? Owen Hart... Uh, they did. They fought so hard to make sure Owen Hart's wife didn't get too much money. And when you think about That's how that sad. man died, yeah, I mean, what the what the impact that Vince McMahon had on the Hart family? Uh, what did he do? Uh, didn't uh, no? I'm sorry. I think that Vince owed money to uh, to the father, Stu Hart, and never really paid him back. Uh, it was for the stampede. He ran the stampede. Vince yep. owed him money yep, up that. in Calgary. Yep. So, uh, uh, he, so he screwed him out of money. He takes the son. Look what he did to the son on the uh, Montreal screw. Uh, I personally think that Bret Hart should have lost the title, but he shouldn't have been cheated out of the title. Right. Because Bret Hart was go Bret Hart was going to the WCW. You know, give the title back. What the way they did it was quite ruthless. And um, that family, the Hart family, boy, I'll tell you what, they had a lot of bad things happen. You know, I hear this a lot, people, with Benoit, uh, ben, Benoit Benoit, and I hear this with Fernand, uh, quite a few people. But, you know, I wouldn't put anything past them, but I'm not going to say something that I have no proof of, <laughs> especially that stuff. But it's out there. A lot of people do say it. Yep. <laughs> Roid rage is very common, especially when they were doing those roids back in the nineties, and they didn't, they didn't know how to do the cycles and stuff. Now, if you're on steroids, they're so good with it. Back then, there wasn't. They, these guys were just putting anything in their body to get big. Yeah, and they didn't have any insurance, any medical care. You know, that is one of the things you're seeing now. Is you know, Vince always used the excuse, well, they're independent contractors. Well, he knew what was going on with the with it, and he would tell people, "If you weren't big, you weren't going to be uh, in. You're not going to be in the match. You're not going to be. You won't have an opportunity to be on television to be able to to get uh, an audience." And so that was done on purpose. Bruce Pritchard dropping a podcast hyping uh, of Pat recently is in bad taste. Like Bruce Pritchard's in bad taste. Uh, Bruce Pritchard did a. Uh, uh, did a podcast three years ago. It's a matter of fact, if you want to watch it, I it's in, you can find it, uh, one of the first videos ever here. Um, but he did a video uh, attacking my brother, Tom, saying things that he didn't know. And then he was talking about me saying things he didn't know. And Pritchard did this because he was uh, Vince McMahon's yes boy. Can't stand Bruce Pritchard. There's, if I had to take a group of people I couldn't, couldn't stand, Bruce Pritchard would be one of them. He's not a very nice guy. He spent his whole life kissing Vince McMahon's ass. What did, a, a matter of fact, Ronda Rousey called him uh, Vince McMahon's avatar. <laughs> Ronda yeah. Rousey, yeah. Ronda Rousey, that was a good one. And you know Ronda. Ronda didn't give a shit. Ronda would probably tell him to his face and kick his ass. Yeah, Ronda. You know Ronda has a. You know doesn't need the WWE. She had not need Vince McMahon. So. Wrestlers don't buy it. You want to ask? Do you think the owner of? 
Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. I see that coming out. Like I could definitely see that. If I'm a little bit behind here, I'm sorry, uh, because we got into a good conversation. I want to try to read people I haven't read. If I read you already, I wouldn't be as much. Uh, Wrestling with the Devil. Why don't you educate the audience on the McMahon family, the grandfather? I did. We just put. I just put out a video on the grandfather, uh, Jess. I believe Jesse was his name. Yep. Father. We put the mob ties that the that that the grandfather had. Uh, the video's out. I put that video out about a week and a half ago. You guys want to hear something funny? I put out a video. I put out a video uh, ten days ago. And on the cover, of what's her name at that screaming face? Uh, uh, Stephanie McMahon. And do you know that I got copyrighted on that? I didn't get a strike, but I got copyrighted and they took it down. Oh, I, wow. Uh, so that means that they said that I used a WWE picture that mm. was owned by them of Stephanie McMahon. So that tells me Stephanie McMahon seen that picture. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, that's what they're going to do. That's going to be their ammunition. It's it's more about, um, you know, doing stuff like that underhanded. It's uh, trying to, you know, mute your voice, you know, and that's that's what yeah. they're going to do. And I like to say one thing, uh, Janet, uh, this whole thing's coming to the forefront with Ashley Massaro. It's, it's a sad she's gone. I believe her brother died short after her, too. Yeah. Uh, but she does have a child. And let's hope the best for them. Uh, DB yes. eight three five six ten dollars. The WWF tobacco is like uh, home run tra training video that everyone thinks is too far fetched for anyone to think could ever happen. An HR video. I'm sorry, <laughs> home run video. HR video. <laughs> okay. Cheek. I don't understand how you can do this to kids. A guy or. Listen, I had a guy who I thought was a friend the other day, literally mocking my brothers. And for the last two shows I was on with him, he seemed like he he wanted to defend uh, the WWE. He wanted he wanted to defend Pat Patterson. He wants now he wants to defend Mel Phillips. Those are the guys that are the problem. Those wrestling guys. They don't understand. This is a new error. Error. They have to understand one thing. I don't give a shit, okay? I don't give a shit about this being a wrestling thing. I enjoy wrestling, but I don't live wrestling. Wrestling is not what makes my podcast. It's putting up good stuff, which makes your podcast. Terry Garvin was a monster. Same as Patterson. Same as Phillips. Same as Vince. Brian, I couldn't say it better. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Kevin Nash, another one. Defending Vince McMahon, Kevin Nash. Kevin, if I ever see your seven-foot ass, we got problems. No, he's a big boy, ain't he? Yeah. <laughs> Lulu, uh, remember when Vince humiliated Trish Stratus by forcing her to bark on all fours in a ring? It was like a movie deliverance. He, but how many times did he do that to humiliate wrestlers in the ring? He humiliated oh, my God. He, he humiliated his own daughter, his own wife, his own wife. Yeah, I mean, everything in the name of entertainment in his eyes, but it's also his way of, of sending a message. I mean, it, there's more. It's more than just entertainment. When he did Ric Flair has been quiet because Gene Barillo stole his jewelry. <laughs> You know, people, if you don't know, there's a, there's this guy that he's an informant. For the he, he reformed in the mafia. And his name is uh, Gene Barillo. And there was a rumor that he stole Ric Flair's jewelry. Uh, I, I don't know if it's true, but there is a little bit of evidence kind of showing it is. Uh, well, the problem is that, that anytime you try to talk to um, uh, talk to him, he's drunk, you know. What Rick Flair? Yeah, Rick Flair. Yeah. yeah. So he I probably mean, don't even know if it was stolen or not. He does. He Rick Flair does not drink coffee in the morning. He drinks liquor in the morning. Yeah. Or he drinks coffee with liquor in it. Yeah. Yeah, and he's um, his second heart's about to give out, I believe. His second heart, right? Yeah. 
Weird Shane Nick posted WW Venture was over there too. Wonder what uh, that was about. And you know, listen, I wouldn't be I, surprised. Flair may die in the ring. You know, honestly, he shouldn't be. Um, does he even go in the ring anymore? I don't think he goes in the ring. I think he no. does show. Yeah. 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 But yeah. you know what? Wouldn't that be where Ric Flair would want to die anyway? Yeah, that's what I, you know. It's kind of like the mobsters. They want to die in the street, you know? And so was, and you Flair, at, same and, way. Yeah. You look at Ric Flair, it's like uh, Ric Flair, Roddy Piper. These guys were phenomenal wrestlers, phenomenal entertainers. And, yeah. And, they, and, and the endings of their life is not so phenomenal. You know, it's kind of sad. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. Aldano Petrano, if the case ever went to trial, nothing would please me more than to have both Shane and Stephanie testify against their father. And the, all four of them may. Because one thing we know about the feds, when they want to put somebody away, they'll let they'll take anybody to inform on them. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. That's a point that, um, that can't be understated. The, the feds, you know, especially like the FBI and the Justice Department, they they like these type of cases that are high profile. That helps them when they need to get money for budget, you know, and they will, if they, if they have vents in their crosshairs, they're not going to stop till they get him. Okay, Renee, uh, since 1983, McMahon has been able to do whatever he wants. Now he's in his late seventies. Do you think he cares about going to jail? He's going to, uh, listen, um, I, I believe this way. I believe that the man's sick. I believe he, he's in the stages, the beginning stages of dementia. And I believe that he's going to have the same fate as Jimmy Snuka, another evil bastard. He's probably going to forget everything in life and be uh, sitting in a chair drooling all over himself and not even knowing where he is. And, and, and But basically, Vince McMahon, even if Vince McMahon went to jail, say, tomorrow, he still got away with it. He still did this for seven yep. years. I mean, so what? They got justice. They got justice when his life's almost over. They put him in prison. Where is he going to be? He's going to be in a hospital ward. That's where he's going to be. Yeah, it's like that, you know, that porn star, Ron Jeremy. Look at how he is. They, they, you know, he did all this stuff, and and now um, he's yeah. he's basically yeah. crazy. Yeah, uh, but, but we're, dis we're discovering, though, that that Vince McMahon was dirtier than Ron Jeremy. Well, and that's hard. That's hard to yeah. uh, get dirtier, but you're right. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, Vince McMahon was the Ron Jeremy of the WWE. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. And, uh, you know, and I could see something similar to that for, for Vince. If he goes to trial and everything, he's going to have dementia. He'll be, you know, but that's basically how Ron Jeremy was. He's drooling over himself, had the, you know, hair that was turned white and all that you know so it'll be interesting what happens to vince's mustache right when he goes to trial so triple h stephanie mcmahon and nick khan voted on the board of directors for vince mcmahon not to return exactly and he had to see he knew he had the votes in his pocket to return yeah because his wait. percentage he had the percentage you know no i'm talking about no the votes the votes yeah the uh, votes the, 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 yeah, he had he had to have a certain amount of uh, three people that voted against him were the uh, was Stephanie, uh, uh, Nick Khan, and uh, Triple H, and then the other people voted for him to return. But he was working with them behind the scenes. The other people, so right. he got what he wanted. Well, the best thing that could have happened to him is that he wasn't allowed to return because then he'd be sitting at home and enjoying his grandchildren and not worried about whether he's going to jail or not. Yeah, and you, you know, you've got a good point. If he didn't come back, would any of this have happened, you know? Would this have would this have happened? You know, it's it's still amazing to me someone that you know, where money's not an issue. You know, he's a billionaire worth 3 and a half billion dollars. Why he stopped paying that woman after the first million? He owed 3 million. It's just to me that's um it's pretty short-sighted, but I think he just felt he could get away with it and not have to face any consequences. 
<laughs> Sam the man says, I've been watching wrestling since 1995. Never heard of an MRE. Well, who that? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, well, listen, Sam the man, you're in the you're in the uh, wrestling genre. You don't want to know who it is. Just stay here. That's another genre. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> Believe me, that's a crazy story. Yeah. The mob genre people makes the wrestling genres calmer and better behaved than the mob genre. Think about that. Yeah. That's what I was saying was just seeing the, you know, like your, the interview you did. And, you know, I was saying, man, I can't believe the, you have a lot of gentlemen in the chat. You know, they're not, I'm used to just, you know, everyone, um, you know, just saying just horrible stuff. And you don't see that as much in the, at least in your chats, you know, with, with your shows. Uh, listen, we just did a show the other day on the territories. That was very mafia like what Vince McMahon did. Vince McMahon even mm -hmm. went into Canada. He even went into Canada and shut that a, a, and took away their their stars there. He went into Texas. He went into Florida. He went into the Carolinas. Vince McMahon went everywhere across this country and raided these uh, uh, territories. He lied to these wrestlers to get them to leave. And then when they showed up at the WWE, only very very only a few of them ever really made it. That's true. And he got them to leave their territories. And like, if you left, say you left Vern Gagne, if you screwed Vern Gagne over, he or he was the type of guy not to take you back. So when these wrestlers screwed these guys over, they're like, don't come, don't bother coming back here. So Vince McMahon, if if he took you from a territory and he couldn't do anything with you, it didn't matter. You were like, you you were ruined as a wrestler already, unless you were some big way. Yeah, yeah, and you know what happened too is that in the old days, I'm talking about before Vince did this, that I I remember you would have people, you know, like Andre the Giant. You couldn't screw him over when it came to money. He wouldn't wrestle. You know, you had to pay him up front, and um, you know, and that's saying that a lot of these guys that came during the time of Vince taking over. They didn't have the business sense that people like Andre the Giant and some of those guys had that they just, they, they knew how they could get screwed over yeah. and they weren't well, going to let it happen. Over, did, this sounds like a bad porno movie. Sky Lolo and Little Beaver would not stand for this type of wrestling company. <laughs> oh, God. Vince thought he was Walt Disney and he ended up Jerry Springer. Okay. Sky Lolo and Little Beaver. I remember them. Yep. You know something, George the Animal Steel, it's kind of funny. You always heard myths about him over the years, but he turned out to be a pretty nasty guy. He didn't have many friends. Uh, no. I, yeah, I actually heard one story just recently about uh, someone was two minutes late and got fined by George the Animal. It was a popular wrestler, too. Oh, it was Bret Hart. Bret Hart tells Bret a story. Bret Hart, yeah. Yeah, about George the Animal Steel. Him, they were two minutes late. Him and him and his uh, neat heart, and uh, they were two minutes late, and uh, they got fined five hundred dollars each, and uh, they were just in the back getting coffee. They were in the building, but they were just saying that he was such a bad man. Uh, yeah, I heard that. I never heard that before. But you know what, Bret Hart. If Bret Hart says it, I'm going to take it under consideration. Yeah, definitely. I mean, to me, they're they're a the big part of of can Canadian wrestling and you know a big part of WWF and WWE yeah. and it's just a Do shame right. what happened. Do right get getting number now but already falling off. Haven't heard news about McMahon situation for a week or more. Will it just no it it's just gonna die down for a while. There's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, Do right A lot of stuff. And a lot of people can't talk either. They're under gag yes. orders. Yeah, or if you get a subpoena, you're only allowed to say so much. There's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes right now. Believe me. Everybody, you don't hear nothing right now because people are nervous and scared because they don't know where the hammer is going to come down. This is the eye before the storm. This is exactly yes. what it is. Yeah, you. Had, yeah, great point. You had the storm hit. You're in the eye now, and then the rest of the storm's coming. And the, the, the second half of this storm is going to be a lot bigger than the first half. Yeah.
Okay, do you think uh, wrestling will go back to the good versus bad cartoon type show like the 80s? Currently, it's unwatchable. Yeah, well, you know, I think that it's going to be improved uh, over time because one thing that uh, uh, Endeavor knows how to do is put out a good product. They proved that over the years with the uh, UFC. I can see them improving it. Yeah, and I think you're going to see more uh, co-branding with UFC moving forward once they get past all this crap with wwe and so you know i think you're you're going to see a better product and it's going to be entertaining plus with you know this contract with uh netflix is you know they've got a lot of money coming in well i'll tell you what guys i'm gonna call this a show now but it's been fun i mean almost two hours a lot of people here, you know, nice little crowd of 160 down to 130 now. Yeah, they I stayed mean, the whole time nearly. Yeah. Yes, we had great participation rate. And uh, and uh, I just like to thank everybody and tell you, please go check out the membership. Join our membership. There's a button uh, right on the front page that says membership because we're going to be doing some lives in those memberships too. Next Saturday at 4 o'clock Eastern, we'll be doing another live every Saturday at 4. I might do one during the week, a surprise if something happens. But for now on, at 4 o'clock every Saturday, there will be a live show, people. And also, go over to the Mob Channel. That's Lee Cole 3, James Proctor. Uh, James runs that now. Go over there and check out that stuff. Really good. Very busy over there. Yep. Uh, uh, but it's... All those links will be underneath this video uh, for you to, to hit. From membership all the way down to uh, uh, the mob channel, to this channel. Um, but we'd like to thank all of you for being here. It's been a blast, man. I, I I was nervous. I thought maybe we weren't in the algorithm yet for lives, that it wasn't going to be as good as it's been today. So thank you all so much. Thank you for the people that donated. That's very much appreciated. Yes. And uh, everybody take care. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.